Good evening. This is Brad Newton, principal at Clements High School. And I'd like to thank you for taking a moment to view this video of our annual Title I parent meeting. The purpose of this meeting is to explain what a Title I school is and what that means for parents at a Title I school. The Every Student Succeeds Act of 2015 requires that we have a Title I meeting each year. Again, the purpose of this meeting is to inform you that we are, in fact, a Title I school, that, to let you know that there are numerous requirements for Title I schools, and let you know your rights as a parent to be involved in school processes. On the screen, you'll see a list of questions that hopefully we'll answer during this meeting. However, if there are other questions that you may have, feel free to email or call us here at the school. And this is just another slide with more questions that we try to answer through these meetings. Being a Title I school means that we receive some federal funding to supplement the school's existing programs. The important term there is to supplement. We're unable to use these funds to pay for the normal everyday things that we would use as a school. These funds must be used in addition to the normal things that we would purchase. Therefore, the use of these funds can sometimes be complicated and challenging, but oftentimes these funds are used to help identify and support students who are struggling in the school, especially those students who are identified as having risk factors that might impact their learning. Any school system that gets an allocation from the federal government exceeding $500,000 is required by law to set aside 1% of its allocation for parent and family engagement. Each school receives a set-aside amount of funds that is used to help promote family engagement. Some ways that these funds might be used are to pay for student academic assessments, provide struggling learners with additional assistance. We often use these funds to hire additional staff. And then it is also used to promote school programs, including migrant preschool, school choice, EL, homeless, and supplemental educational services as needed. Parent and family engagement strategies are also included in order to promote a more cohesive school community. The bullet at the bottom of the slide will be repetitive in this slideshow. Parents have a right to be involved. So each school has a parent and family engagement plan. The purpose of this plan is to find ways to more actively engage parents and the community. Parents are encouraged to be involved in the decision-making process. We do this by forming committees or sending out surveys or other efforts to gain productive feedback. A CIP is a school's continuous improvement plan. This plan should be based off of school data and should include goals and strategies to address academic needs of students. This may be accomplished through professional development involving teachers, coordination of resources and our, our budget, and the school's parent and family engagement plan. Once again, as Title I parents, you have a right to be involved in this process. The plan for family engagement can be developed by the school. However, there are templates available and oftentimes we begin with a template and then make the needed adjustments. The school parent compact is a letter that comes home at the beginning of the year and parents and students sign this letter. And it is essentially an agreement between the school, the student, and the parent that each of us will uphold our duties. Those are distributed again at the beginning of the year when you sign all of the handbook pages and all of those things. And then they are collected and kept in the student's homeroom in a file. As a parent, you have a right to request the qualifications of your child's teacher. We send home a letter each year. It's called the Right to Know letter. And it gives you the opportunity to request the qualification of your child's teacher. You do have the option to request the qualifications of your child's teacher, but you are not required to do that. Each year, we must evaluate each of our plans. And we do this typically through surveys or other feedback mechanisms where we can learn from you what items work well and what items do not work well and make adjustments for the next year's plan. On the screen you will see a list of leaders at 
Clements High School, please feel free to call, email, set up an appointment, or come by and see us.